you think about why? I said, okay. <laughs> I'll do that. <laughs> and I <laughs> and walked away. What she was implying was that she had been making the jokes to make me go on a diet. Mm -hmm. And that finally, I think, you know, I had gotten the message and done something about it and lost 65 pounds. I think that was the implication. Did there you... were other people at the table that kind of got that feeling. Mm -hmm. Have you said anything since? Mm -mm. Were no, there times I, when... I feel very sorry for Joan. I really do. Were there times when you wanted to say something, though? Didn't you want to say something to all the people who were making jokes? No. Uh, there, would, there would have been times when I could have. Uh, but I got there myself. Mm -hmm. uh, nobody else got me there. Yeah. I put myself in that position. I made myself vulnerable to those jokes. I made myself the cause of those jokes. start with the process of um, when you first, you, 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 you call it in the book clicking, something clicked. Now, I've clicked many times, and I know that the process between clicking and actually doing it um, is a long journey. Did you wake up one morning and you, and you looked in the mirror and said, that's it? It did sort of happen. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought about it. I'd taken everything out and sort of put it on the table and looked at it and looked at it. And I was revving up to it, but the click hadn't happened. And I was... What did you take? All the food out of it? What did you take no, out on the table? all the stuff in my head. Okay, I was going to say. Uh, and then I did. I stopped in my dressing room and stood in front of a mirror. And it was there hanging out. I had no clothes on, and I looked at it all and said, that's not pretty. Now is the time. Really? Mm -hmm. That's interesting, because you'd seen it before. You'd seen yourself before. Yeah, but I'd managed to, you know, to sort of flit and just to catch a fleeting glance of somebody moving. But not only that... That blob was... was that blob was me. <laughs> But you'd been to spas. You'd been to spas and you'd take... So much. I, I would get away and it was me and the animal and I'd commute with nature and that way I could hold onto myself mm -hmm. the core of me. You talk about a Felipe Halsman, is that his name? He was he a photographer. Mm -hmm. He's still a photographer? Famous one. He, uh, he made you uh, first appreciate your own adult beauty. Is, is that how I should interpret you? Well, I'd never really been aware of one side or the other side. I thought both sides were the same on one's face. I hadn't stopped to think that they were different. I hadn't stopped to analyze my features. How old were you this face time? A face is a face. 16. And it was like the first time I'd worn a very sophisticated evening dress. And somebody did my makeup and hair. It was for Live Magazine, squeezed in my waist. And he told me which side was my grown-up side and which side was my younger side and which side was my better side. Well, the one that made me look grown-up was the side I liked the best because I always wanted to be older than I was. Mm -hmm. When we asked you to be seated here, we gave you the choice of chairs, and you said either one. Actually, if it, this is my best angle back here. You don't mean that. <laughs> uh, you, you're not self-conscious, then, about your side as you enjoy your 55th uh, year. No. True. Uh, which side, curiously, is your best side, in I your really opinion? don't know. Uh, well, which side is your younger side, then, according to Halsman? And this side is your more mature side. Mm -hmm. And they tried to get the uh, beauty mark, too, didn't they? I guess so. Wouldn't let them? Oh, they wanted to cut it off. 
have it removed. And you have double eyelashes. They thought you had mascara as a child, and you didn't. Oh, I used to, before I started every film, have to go to the ladies' room with um, somebody from the set, the script woman or somebody, and wash my eyes uh, to prove that I didn't have mascara. They also didn't like your hair. It was too black and would shoot bad. They said it would photograph blue-black, and they wanted to make it dark brown. They wanted to change the shape of my mouth mm -hmm. because uh, Joan Crawford's mouth was very in, mm -hmm. and lips were sort of square and painted way over the natural mouth. Now, this was before National Velvet, so you didn't have that much Well, color. no, because uh, I didn't wear any makeup. This is when I was about 14 and started wearing makeup because I, I looked about 16 and 17. Mm -hmm. I didn't really go through a transitional period. I went from child to young adult ingenue, then to leading lady when I was still a baby, really, 16. Mm -hmm. I also, um, I I'm in <laughs> No. <laughs> That's beautiful. What is that? My. <laughs> That's uh, a diamond. <laughs> and you can't have it. <laughs> so that's the... No, nope, get your wait, hands. Wait, wait. <laughs> that's the same thing as this? Well, <laughs> I guess so. It was so big, I thought it was some other kind of stone. You know? It's like, so that's from another planet, I assume. That stone. Uh, that's beautiful. That's the Krupp diamond. Since you won't tell me what's special about Larry, how much does that cost? Uh, I, who counts? <laughs> I don't know. I guess if you have to ask, you don't need one. And that's I should just move on again. Said once, yeah. Wow, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Um, we have to take commercial? We, are we all right? Okay, everybody, everybody's over there moving around. It's just like, Liz is here, Liz is here. And, and I, I'm thinking there, there's signals or something. Uh, <laughs> when, you, when you watch movies, what actress do you admire? on the scene today? Oh, there's so many. Um, I think the younger generation of actresses is uh, really good. Um, Michelle Pfeiffer, uh, Julia Roberts. Uh, oh, God, when you ask me, I go blank. Yeah. Um, I can ask you about something I know you won't go blank on. Okay. Let's talk about this. There's so many colors on your top. I don't know if they can see if it reads, but, but we all know what that's about. And, um, you have a new organization, a new foundation. Would you talk about that just for a second? Oh, I'd like to. It's uh, the Elizabeth Taylor AIDS Foundation. And I raise money for this foundation and ask people like you and people at home to send money to the foundation. And then I, I deliver it personally <coughs> to another organization and I pay for the costs of the lawyers and the um, accountants, and they volunteer their services. So there's no overhead. Mm -hmm. It's hard money. And like, uh, I'll send money to APLA or AMFAR, or whatever organization that I've investigated and make sure it's mm -hmm. thoroughly sound. Thanks. And then, then I'll give them a donation of quarter of a million dollars or whatever they really are hurting for mm -hmm. and I don't have to pay any overhead no stamps no envelopes I do all that myself out of my own money I write the thank you notes myself I pay for the stationery and the stamps myself so there's no overhead